Hi everyone. I'm going to be decorating the cover of this insert today. I really don't need another insert right now for my journal. I still have a few weeks left in the A6 Talogy that, that I'm currently journaling in, but I did get a bunch of new stuff in the mail and I really, really want to use it. And I knew I was going to decorate this anyway. So I thought I would just go ahead and turn on the camera for it. This is a Traveler's Company insert. It is the 002. So it, it's this one. I have a few of them because it has MD paper, like Midori MD paper is in here, except this is white. If you buy the thick notebooks, it has cream paper and it comes in blue lines. So the grid in there is blue, but this is white paper and it has these light gray lines for the grid. And I have this year really fallen in love with full grid. I used to be really die hard dot grid kind of person, but after I used a full grid, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know. It created a beast apparently. So I have been dying to use this particular insert because I'm not a huge fan of the blue lines and I wasn't a huge fan of the cream color, but I love the paper. This, depending on my mood, pretty much ties with Tomoe River paper for me. I just, I really, really love how this works with fountain pen inks and then also it's heftier. It's just so much thicker than the 52 GSM and even the 68 GSM Tomoe River paper. So when I tip in things or glue things in or tape things in, this paper just feels like it can handle it. It's just much more uh, rugged. So I'm going to be covering this and I have my labels here. Ah, I love these. Oh my gosh. If, if I... <laughs> If I can't find these at any point, I would, I will be devastated. I use these anytime I, I decorate a cover, I, I use these to, to label them like for anything. It doesn't have to be just journaling. So I've got those and oh my gosh, I have these stickers. This, this is just an extra set because I always end up ordering uh, more, but uh, this sort of coastal, kind of vibe I'm here for it so this is gonna be the theme for this cover and I suppose I should tell you where these adorable stickers are from so it's Sammy Clark I've been following her on Instagram for a while but this is the first time I've ever purchased any of her stickers and stuff so everything will be linked below and these these characters have names you know they go through changes like outfit changes and stuff like that it's stinking adorable i love otters and i love like coastal carolina and um, which this paper is totally coastal carolina and i didn't even know it when i bought it it was um i mean it was just kind of like map so that's what drew me in and when i finally looked at it i was like oh my god i love coastal carolina so i love the whole like sweaters on the coast and stuff. I don't know. This obviously I'm here for this theme. So I'm I'm gonna use him. I think his name is Wesley. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna save these guys. This is Salty Pete. Oh my gosh. And one of these otters is Wesley. So little raincoat one is is gonna wait his turn. So I'm gonna go with him because God, he's so cute. So I also bought this pack. I, I purchased a, a really big purchase from scrapbook.com. And I, I just really wanted some crepe paper papers because I just can't get a hold of them locally anywhere. So I wanted wood, wood grain papers to use as backgrounds and stuff like that. So so I got uh, this set. There's only one of each different type of wood grain, but I consider this an essential. So that was part of what I purchased. This is one of the crepe paper 
uh, sheets that I got and it's part of the Maggie Holmes Sunny Days collection. I really don't care about this side at all. This is what I will be using and then this is the wood grain that I picked out. I love it. It looks weather beaten on the coast so we're we're gonna do that what i'm thinking is i do want to use both of these papers usually i'll pick a paper and use that for the entire cover so i'll just cover it all the way but i actually want to use both of these kind of like how brie at documented journey does hers i'm going to angle mine a little bit differently but she usually has her covers like split with two different kinds of papers. So um, I'm kind of going to do that. Oh, also these, which I know you probably already saw, but on the backs, they all have different uh, like paper layouts. This one happens to be a ledger on the back side, which is pretty cool. Not going to see that at all. Um, so I am... Okay, first of all, I'm a really big fan now of folding whatever paper I'm using all the way over like that because this rounded edge that I get, it is the smallest, most insignificant thing, but having a folded edge right here that's nice and round, it does something for me, like something major, and I have to have that now for some really strange reason. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this wood part on here. And I think I'm gonna cut it diagonally like this across the front and add this paper on. But anyway, let me get this cut down and then we'll come back to it. All right, so I've just chopped the top off of off of this and now it's the same height here now because I want to use both of these I don't want it to get too thick on the cover so I'm gonna trim it down so that there's only like one layer wrapping around here that's what I'm thinking anyway so I think what I'm first gonna do is just glue this in on the inside like this and get it to wrap all the way around. So I I was out of town. We took a little, um, well, we had a little beach getaway. Uh, we like to do that every summer, but obviously we were just like waiting to see what the situation was um, with the beaches and stuff. And uh, we ended up going to Florida and my brother, my brother actually lives there. So, so that was nice. So we had a, a place to stay and managed to enjoy ourselves uh, while still social distancing. Um, but it was nice to just be out on the beach and have a change of scenery. But while, while we were gone, we were gone for like four four days, I think. Um, of course, all the stuff that I had ordered over the last like month and a half, all decided to show up and get delivered when we were gone. So I had packages sitting on my carport like all weekend and we had left and then literally an hour and a half later, I like packages started getting delivered. We have, we have ring, you know, so we can see uh, who's at our, at our door and, and stuff like that. So I saw them get delivered. I was just like, of course, man. Uh, okay. So what I am planning on doing is I'm, I want to angle it like this. Is this going to be upside down? Down. Oh, maybe I'll do like this. Oh, I'm going to do like that. So I should probably, let me see if this is going to, I want to fold it. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. It's going to work. Okay. So I'm actually going to slice the wood down like that. I'm not sure. It's nervous. I'm nervous to commit. 
All right, I'm gonna cut, cut her down right there. Anyway, I, uh, <laughs> I got all my stuff delivered, but it's always bittersweet when we leave for, uh, to go back home after some time off and some vacation. But knowing that I had some stationary goodies waiting for me made it a little easier. Did I get the pen? I think I got most of it off, okay. So it is going to look like that. All right, let's glue him down. All right, so there's that. I think I got glue somewhere on here. There it is. All right, so there's the inside. There's some of the outside. And we're gonna do, we're gonna do this. I almost feel like I should just glue this down and cut the excess off. I, I actually think I might do that. Hmm. But I don't wanna waste all of this paper. Let me see. Man, no, the whole paper is going to be shot. All right, I'm going to do that. I'm going to just glue down. Uh, I'm going to have to get my cutting board out now. So I'm going to glue down this paper and then cut around the edges so it'll be nice and clean. All right, so there's that. And okay, so one of the things that I I ended up getting uh, delivered in the mail was um, I got I got my first Pelican fountain pen. So I I got it off Peyton Street Pens. Actually, I have always wanted to try one. But, uh, they're, I don't know. I've never handled one. I've never, I just, I've never used one. So I'm not really sure. I'm just unsure about it. And you know, they're expensive and I just didn't want to have regret basically, uh, because I have no prior experience, but I've, I've admired them for a long time and I didn't, uh, I didn't particularly like how they, they looked like with the barrel and the shape and everything. But then I saw, <laughs> I saw one from Peyton Street Pens and it's, it's not a vintage or anything. It's just a, uh, it was one from like 2017. It's that all white one. And when I looked it up on, um, like eBay, Ugh, Peyton Street Pens just had the best price for it. And it's it's no longer available really except for eBay. And the places in Europe that I found it was like double and triple the price that Peyton Street Pens had it for. And it was in mint condition as well. Like I know, I know it was a used product, but it was in mint condition and that's good enough for me, especially, especially for the price. So I, I bought it and it was one of the things that I had just received, uh, when I got back from vacation and doesn't this look like a mess? Uh, but oh my goodness. First of all, there was, there was like a little bit of an issue with it. It was a fine, but it, they said it, it wrote like a, a medium, which is great. I don't really prefer extra fine or fine nibs. So I was like, no, 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 that's a selling point for me. I am so good with that. And then they found out that it had a little bit of a flaw in the nib. It had a baby's bottom. So Terry asked me if I would like to go ahead and have that fixed by them. And they just did it as a courtesy. And she said she wanted to ask me first before they did anything to it. So I agreed to it and they had it fixed and shipped the same day. And y'all, it is awesome. I'm sitting here like not knowing what to do, <laughs> how to cut this in a straight line. Um, oh my God, that pen. 
is so awesome and so buttery smooth and I love it. It's called like the ghost, the ghost pen <laughs> because it's white, like all whited out. Uh, I'm like gonna try my best to get a straight line with this, but I have a feeling this is gonna be a super fail. Oh no, oh no, I'm ripping it right there. All right, I'm gonna have to go in with an exacto knife and everything. All right, be right back. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do it this way. I have my my mat. I bought this from AC Moore before it it shut down and broke my heart. Uh, so everything was like seventy percent off, and I remember I kept going back there as the discounts got steeper and steeper, and uh, just just had a blast spending money but I ended up getting so many things that uh, I had been wanting for a while, but just never, never got around to it, including this big giant mat. So there's that. I have a new blade in this X-Acto knife because I was trying to cut some scallops out of, oh, I did a good job. I was trying to cut some scallops out of leather. So I had to put this on and then I ended up I spent like an hour on the, on that and then I never ended up uh, using it. So there you go. So yeah, I love the Pelican. I'll probably do a video just like uh, about, I don't know, showing the, the new stuff that I got. And if you watched my last video where I... Uh, did the ink swatches of the Robert Oster inks from Van Ness. I, I ended up uh, saying in that video that I got two Noodler's inks from Jet Pens because I wanted to buy this plastic zip pouch from Jet Pens. So I threw those inks in there just to uh, maximize that, that shipping cost. And I got 54th Massachusetts and Walnut. And man, those are awesome. I really, really love those inks. I'm so nervous right now. Like, because I can't really see the... Ugh. Do your best. But anyway, I got those inks and I found them to be kind of dupes for a few of the Robert Oster inks that I had swatched. So, oh my gosh, <laughs> y'all are witnessing me do a pretty poor job here. Oh, is that okay? Oh, that is kind of okay, okay. So anyway, I was really thrilled to find that the Walnut ink I really, really loved. Um, I loved it better than the Robert Oster Golden Brown, actually, which I had been planning on purchasing and discovered that the tone of the Noodler's Walnut ink was so much better to me. I, I liked it better. It was so much more vibrant and just it was just beautiful so super duper happy with that Ugh, here's where it's gonna get i don't know where it is i should have thought about this a little bit better but we're gonna just try <laughs> oh gosh well did i do it this. Okay. <laughs> Need to find a better way to, to do that. All right. I think, I think we're doing, we're doing okay here. All right. So I trimmed down all the edges here. Let me just, oh, all right. That looks cool. That's how I wanted it to come out. All right. And then we have 
the inside and then the back side here. I love how it's skewed. It's not like perfectly straight. I tend to like to have things perfectly vertical and perfectly horizontal. So that's that's good for me. All right, so let's see. We're gonna use him. I keep wanting to call him Wesley, but I'm not exactly sure if that's his name. All right, I got two of these stickers cut out. I don't, I think I might end up using the smaller one actually. I have my white gel pen because I really wanted to maybe do some like doodling some sparkles and stars. There's some things that I've just been doing lately, just adding things in. And I thought it might be nice to do it around him, but I need to decide on a size here. Oh, I think I like, I think I like this one. I wish I could get a pack with just this size on it because I tend to use this one the most. All right, I'm gonna commit to this. I'm not gonna add much more Oh, also these die cuts, they are actually clear on the edges. I know some of these aren't, uh, like it's very thin on the edge of Salty Pea and then it's like thicker over here. And then this one happens to have a really thick border, but the borders are actually clear. So the actual artwork is opaque, but this border is clear, so it doesn't actually matter how how thick it is, which was exciting to me because uh, one of the hangups that I have when getting stickers that are die cuts from shops is that their borders are so big and sometimes I have to do extra work by trimming them down myself. So you can see, he is actually opaque, but the edges are clear. I love it. Stick them like this. Perfect. Oh. And these are just such thick vinyl and such great detail. He is so cute. Oh my gosh. All right, so he's on there and I think, I didn't know if I wanted to skew it. I think I like it there where it's crossing both papers. Let's do that. I actually don't think I'm going to write on this yet. I'm just gonna wait till I actually use this. I, I had decorated a cover with fabric and I ended up putting journal 2020 on it and honestly I don't even know if I'm gonna get to it in 2020 so I need to just when I'm decorating a head like this I really need to just leave those, those blank and I want to do some doodling around him I think I've gotten in the habit of adding stars just tiny little stars and little like dots and bubbles and things in, uh, in one of my other journals, which, which I need to talk about. So I'm gonna go around him and maybe along this edge and do some of the doodling. I wonder if I should just outline him. See, I don't always doodle though, so it makes me nervous to do so and to commit to something like this. Okay, I don't think I want to because I realize I do have a thing for stuff that's sort of, sort of hidden or sort of blended in just a touch for some reason. So I think I'm just gonna add some other different types of, of doodling in here just to draw more attention to this area. I realize I'm probably gonna need to add some black in here. So think I may outline some of these things that I doodled in black. Let's see. All right. I think
think I like that. Ugh, this is gonna take so much work. All right, yeah, I think I like it with a black outline. So now I have to do the whole thing. <laughs> this is 0.38, so uh, I need a little bit bigger of a nib. So I went ahead and grabbed my 0.5 Uniball Signo. Why do I ever stray? Uh, just so I don't have to do as much work trying to get that line thicker. Okay, I think I am happy with this. You can see all of the doodling around him. So I think I'm going to keep it, keep it like that. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, I think I need some more <laughs> like right here. So I'm going to add some of these. All right, there he is. So I, I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it like that. Okay, okay, so that is the whole cover done. I, I think it's so cute. It came out exactly the way I had wanted it to. Uh, I, I've been tending to keep my covers pretty simple. I usually use some kind of paper and a label and then some kind of sticker that goes with the theme or the colors or something like that. So I'm glad I was able to incorporate two different papers in this and I love the way that this came out. I cannot wait to use it next and that's it. I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and I will see you again soon. Bye.